today on Gamer's Couch. Great Western Trail. Hello and welcome to the couch. Oh no! He, no! I cannot punch you on camera. Well, you can certainly, but... Uh, what will people think? Please do! <laughs> I, I have video evidence. Oh, I hate when he... When he's... Uh, Pfeiffing. <laughs> Pfeiffing. <laughs> what is the, the old British way of talking, whistling. <laughs> talking about whistling. The Pfeiffing. Oh, oh God. You're the Pfeiffer. You totally <laughs> distracted me. Oh gosh. Folks, this is this is gonna be a difficult journey, not only through canyons on the board, but also through this video with him. We're going to try, nonetheless. This is Daniel, by the way, my sweet hubby, who's whistling sometimes and annoys me that way. Otherwise, he's super nice. I'm Sarah. I'm the artist behind Pinselgeschichten, owner of this channel, and board gamer, just as my hubby. So we decided, well, we're going to start a collection a couple of years ago. It's growing like a good, tiny kid. And we share um, one game per week with you and tell you a tiny bit about rules and gameplay, play a few turns, then we talk to you about what we liked or not liked. It's also a surprise for us because we don't talk about things beforehand. And then we share a few funny stories and experiences and every two weeks there's a teaser for Draw for Initiative. <gasps> Breathe. Now, that was uh, housekeeping, my love. Are you ready to start? rules and gameplay well uh following that ancient uh, proverb to get the cow off the ice um after that intro Ooh. now i'm <laughs> we are going to do great great <laughs> things in the west um if you if you're kind of excited for this year's release of red dead redemption 2 this might get you into the mood this is all about uh walking stakes and uh, in fact, this is very much about walking stakes from. Oh, their, I'm getting hungry. Stop that. From from their origin point, uh, <laughs> sit them in a train, first class, uh, and uh, wave a teary goodbye as they cattle off into the distance and bring you victory points because that's a board game. <laughs> that's how it works. You won't get delicious steaks or oh, anything. Oh, stop it! We're just recording filet, just before dinner. Or filet mignon. <gasps> It's all about the victory points. I'm good and hungry now. Stop it. Well, then we have to keep this short. <laughs> uh, okay. So this video is going to be rare. I guess. Ah! What? It's rare? A rare, yeah, but it's rare. That Medium we, rare. No, it's rare. That stop we, that stop was, talking I about cool. I certainly did not make a pun, a very cheap pun. Because you never do that. On, no. On a steak. Oh. Anyway, you're a cowboy. I'm a cowboy. Sarah is desperate. So <laughs> let's get this going. I'm desperate. I'm hungry. <laughs> In Great Western Trail, you try to well, get your cattle to the train and uh, ship it off to different towns to gain victory points, as I said. But it combines that with some other interesting aspects. So if you take a look at this tiny, tiny board, and it's one of those games that come with little sister boards that uh, go in front of every player, because... Uh, I'm I'm now up to the. I think there's a scoop to be made out there for journalists to figure out that there's some kind of backroom deal going on between table manufacturers and board game manufacturers and designers to make them as big as possible so that the tables have to get bigger and more. But there's certainly a conspiracy going on. <laughs> anyway, um, so. Uh, we, our little cowboy dudes, start down here and um, you will try to move up to here, which is Kansas. Uh, unfortunately, you have to walk there. You cannot just clap your shoes together and uh, wish you were home. No I'm singing. Little, no I'm, singing. I don't know the song, but I'm proud that I got the reference to the Wizard of Oz. I'm so proud of myself. <clears throat> There's no place like home. There's no place like yes. home. There's so, no place like home. So little Alice and me. Oh, no. Wait. That's the other. Anyway. So <laughs> we will move along these 
Wait for it. Great Western Trails. <laughs> To get to the little train station. Up Maybe here, I should. Where our train engines are waiting for the new cow conductor who's then waving at you, driving Try. off. Maybe what? I should start publishing these videos under a different category. No more gaming, just comedy. <laughs> I, I, I don't think we, we would make... No, it's more like tragedy, but anyway. So... Uh, going from player to player, you, you have uh, a couple of turns uh, to, to play and um, some things you can do. First off, um, you also have cards on hand. In fact, you have your very own deck because there's a slight deck building aspect to this game. And, and I need to go wash my hands. And you uh, start with four cards on hand and, uh, well, it's... Oh, you have to clean your hands as well. Go. And your hands, in this case, say moo from time to time. In this case, uh, I'm going with some Black Angus beef and uh, some Jersey beef uh, uh, to trying to deliver these uh, guys. Um, now, on my turn, uh, or you can kind of split up a turn into three different phases. Um, First, uh, you uh, get to move. Um, you have, uh, in this case, I have red, my little guy. Uh, now, uh, at the beginning, and this kind of also depends on how many players you have, but your board actually tells you how far you can move. So my guy can go three steps. Um, uh, these empty spaces are not considered places or locations, uh, but these small ones are. So I can move and I could go one, two, three up to here. Or I could go one, two, three or some other way. Um, so you have a choice where you want to go. Um, the important part is for the, for most cases where you stop. Um, if you stop somewhere, so I'm not going that far actually, I'm just going here. You don't have to go all the three spaces. Um, that now determines what actions are available <coughs> to you for this turn. Um, this tile, which is by the way a neutral tile, offers two different things and I can do both and I can also decide in what order I want to do them. So this first icon here tells me if I have two moos or cows on, uh, that are, are of the same color on hand, I can discard them and get four coins for them. Uh, actually, I will do that because uh, you'll see uh, I won't be. It won't do me any good to keep uh, the same cow on hand uh, until the end. I want to have a diverse cast of yummy beef uh, with me. So I'm discarding those moos. Um, and no, not not moose. Meese. Elks. <laughs> <laughs> the other word. Anyway, I'm so I'm now getting money. That's the important part. I'm <laughs> I'm uh, getting four coins for, for that. <laughs> now the second thing there is I can uh, pick up one of my uh, of the danger tiles, uh, which or hazards. Yes. Well, although I have to say, danger tiles sounds way more interesting. Danger um, tiles. It sounds like are, a Saturday morning cartoon show. These are these smaller tiles here, uh, except or with the exception to these. Uh, uh, TP tiles, which are uh, handled a little, little bit different. Uh, so what I can do now is I could pay seven coins to pick one of those up. Um, first of all, these tiles are worth victory points. So the one that's on board that has the highest value would be this one for four victory points, which would be cool to pick up to have four victory points. Also, there are objective cards in this game that you that require you to have certain things to complete them. Every player starts out with a kind of base uh, objective cards, but you can get more of them uh, that are here on the side of the board, and not all of them revolve around these tiles, but that's one of the conditions. So this one requires me to have two of the danger tiles or hazard tiles. So to no, go with danger people. tiles, please. Danger tile, one and two here are, <laughs> are required. And also I need a blue TP, which uh, would be something else I can acquire. If I manage to do that, that entire card, in addition to the points of those 
danger tiles is worth an additional three victory points. So um, actually, it might be a good idea to do that. So I'm <coughs> paying Sorry. Um, seven. Ah, and, uh, this is great on audio for the rummaging through the coins. Well, it's actually above yeah. level-wise, so uh, we should so be kind of okay. I get to pick up one of the danger tiles, <laughs> and I'm already placing it on, on the card. Uh, uh, these tiles uh, cannot be used for different objective cards. You kind of have to you don't really have to commit them, but you have to have enough of them to fill up all the cards. So if I get another card that requires them, I need more of those tiles. I can reuse ones I, I uh, got earlier. Um, that was my kind of the second phase, the action phase. Uh, if I would be super annoyed by the choices given to me on that tile, I would also have something else at my disposal. Almost, uh, they're called auxiliary actions. Those are like one-shot actions. And uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, on your board, you only have two available. One is you get a coin, and the other one is you discard a card and then draw a new card. Um, you can upgrade those or unlock newer ones. That's why these little discs are on here, but we'll get to that uh, later on. Which brings us to the third phase, uh, which is draw up to four cards again, yeah. which I'm going to do in hopes that I have uh, a more diverse cast of Moo, which I don't, which is super annoying. But Well, uh, you can just have a bit of more we'll diversity of here. But I'm quickly going to do my turn. I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to discard two one moves and I'm going to get four coins and then I'm going to draw up because I need my other cards. Oh, shit fuck. Okay. okay. And it's your turn. And it's my turn. Uh, now, I... The, as you can see, the, the cows I have, uh, have on hand, the situation is almost as bad uh, as it was before, um, which is not helping at all. Um, but I want to do maybe something else. So that next tile uh, isn't really helpful to me. This allows me to acquire new workers. Um, you see on our board we have three different types of workers for us. We have, uh, well, people who... Talk to cows most of the, often, uh, most of the time. People who talk to the cow whisperer. People who talk to buildings most of the time, and then there we have people who talk to trains all the time. Um, <laughs> so Sheldon, I don't know who the house one is, and um, I forgot the pun for the cowboy. <laughs> I already said it earlier. <sighs> Just ignore. It goes away. It's it's uh, it, it. I'm her. It's mad cow disease, probably. Oh yeah. Um, so probably. I'm I'm trying to go. Let's see where I can go. Um, I don't want to stay here, so I could go to the next thing, which uh, then would allow me to build a building. And I think I have just enough to to do that. Uh, I cannot uh, use that first action. Uh, that would uh, I need a red uh, a green two to uh, use it. Um, so I'm going to build something. Now, uh, all of us uh, players have this little set of buildings in front of us. And in fact, although there's a kind of two sides to these, you agree at the start to use the same for everybody. So everybody has the same kind of building at their disposal. So what happens now is I can build a building and have to pay for it. Uh, the What building I can build is determined by the number of builders up here. Uh, so there's three that require one builder and I start with one of these engineer dudes. Um, so these three buildings are the only ones I can choose from at the moment. And this tile says I have to pay two coins, which I still have, to build a, a building, or two coins per builder to build the building. Um, blah, blah. Now, uh, one of the features of uh, buildings, and you'll see them on the small tiles as well, is uh, these green hand or a black hand even. Uh, that means if a player goes over that, they have to pay a certain amount of money. And that also depends on, uh, depends on how many players are playing the game. In our two-player version here, we would just pay two coins whenever we have to cross that. Meaning, if I place this here... Sarah, I'm gonna hit you forever. Sarah has to pay me two coins if she ha if she moves over that building uh, up. You update. destroy my plans. That's, put it somewhere else. That's why uh, the uh, these uh, danger 
Danger zone. Danger tile paths are there and uh, also have an uh, additional, uh, well, kind of. Uh, you, I want advantage. to show them something. Can you put it a bit higher? No, maybe? I'm, I'm, I think I actually will go here oh, okay. to illustrate something else. Um, first of all, this tile gives me money for each building I have that is built over some of these wood uh, features. Um, and if some other player goes onto this, uh, they would have to pay uh, for actually mm, maybe no maybe I'll I'll I'll, <coughs> I'll do this. This okay. make this would make a little bit more sense. So this is another one of those uh, give two cards mm. and get coins. It has a little dude on here that means go over to the next tile and then I can use these, but I don't draw cards in between. What I actually wanted to show you is. Um, the uh, typically the two spaces after the danger tiles have some additional benefits. So here, if I discard a one, a gray one, I get to uh, get some additional bonuses, which doesn't make a lot of sense to explain now. Um, but that's it so far. I build the building. I don't draw any new cards because I didn't spend any cards, and it's now I can show them something else. So I go one, two, three to the moo shop. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a black two, so I get two coins. Yes. And uh, that lovely little head here says I can go to the cow market and I can buy myself a new cow. And what cows are available depends on, well, you might have guessed it, how many uh, cow wranglers, cowboys uh, are uh, on the board. So since we all start with one of each, Sarah only has one. And... This little chart here tells uh, Sarah what she can buy. She can either buy a blue, a red, or yellow cow for six coins, or she can buy one of those four cows for 12 coins. And here is my objective, because you don't really see my board uh, on frame, so I'm... I, it was a secret for you hmm. until now. So I need you're, a four you're cow. Very surprised now. A number four cow and a number three cow and a building. So I'm definitely gonna go for the number four cow because we have one and I've got twelve coins. Um, so master of disaster. So here's the money. I'm gonna take my so far West the, Highland cow. So far the cows uh, haven't made a huge kind of impact on our decisions here, uh, but you may realize that they have different <coughs> colors and different values and generally speaking what you want to have when you land in Kansas uh, are different types of cows and high value cows because that kind of depends of uh, how much uh, or determines how much money you you'll be getting um, so let's see what what else we can do I have a very very uh, few amount of money um, what I think I'll, I'll be doing is I'll skip this and go right over here. Uh, and uh, here's uh, another notation that says, first, I can either trade with uh, Indians or I can pay money to move uh, my engine further, uh, which we'll talk about uh, once some one of us gets to Kansas. And this other icon means I can use my... Um, uh, uh, my auxiliary reaction. In fact, if I had one uh, or if I had both sides unlocked, I could use it twice. That's why it says 1x, 1x there. I think I'm trying to work on, uh, I still work on my um, my little task here. So I'm trying to, uh, to get my blue TP that I mentioned earlier. Um, and here it actually depends on uh, which one you, you take. Uh, some give you coins. In this case, uh, ones on the way give me coins. So I get the blue guy here and I'll get a coin for that. Um, uh, if the more are up here, the higher the, the chances are that you pick up one that's worth coins. The other ones that are here are you have to pay for them. And then I'm using my auxiliary action. Since I had a terrible time at drawing cards, I will discard this one. And actually, I think it's uh, it's the other way around. I get to yeah. draw a card, and then I get to I oh get to my gosh. I get to take my hand and do this. Face palm. And then I'll discard a card. And you were really unlucky drawing cards today. Um, I think these... Did you shuffle these at all? No. That might explain but a lot. No, I sh we shuffled in the beginning. You shuffled yours once and I shuffled mine once, but not when I set but them I up. Think, but I think the rest of the cards filming. have never been shuffled. Oh, oh they have been. We uh, Tina played red. Okay. 
Bro. They were all shuffled, babe. Um, so I'm gonna. Uh, I maybe maybe there's a, a, a hidden card in here and no. the amber. I can I can take a TP. But then you have, now you have to pay yeah, for it. My <laughs> one coin. Then you can only buy buy the green TP. Um, you, but I don't can, want to. I don't have to do the action. Right, Sarah can choose to ignore that and then use the auxiliary action that's on there. Uh, yes, uh, I want to do the same thing. I want to draw a card. I want to just card a card. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm still not going for Kansas quite yet. I'll be going here. Uh, <coughs> and now this means I get to move the engine one space per boop, boop, boop. Uh, conductor dude that I have on here. So my train whisperer does some good whispering to that train and it moves to the next space. Ooh. Nothing great uh, or otherwise great is happening. So I'll try this again. I'll draw a card for my auxiliary action and hooray! Yay. Now my turn has ended and it's Sarah's turn. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do the choo-choo. Yeah, now, now train engines have a, a specifically f uh, fat bottoms so they cannot share the same space. So Sarah will just pretend as if I weren't there and go to the next space. Um, and draw also draws a card and is Doesn't, not satisfied with uh, it. So, not amused. I'm not, oh, well. I'm not going to Kansas, and uh, there's not much to do except for uh, mm. what the Kansas uh, track here tells me to. So first, uh, we start with one. Um, first, I get to decide which new danger tile... I know it still has it, but go with me. Uh, which new <laughs> danger tile we're, we're going in. Um, since I have my red building down here, I'm not super fond of, uh, of spicing up uh, this track, so I will go with this one. And it's also it's always placed in the smallest or in the uh, lowest numbered place available, is I think the correct term. <coughs> um, then we go to two, and here I can decide what new guys are available on the market. It doesn't matter much at this point in time. Um, actually, let me do this uh, like this. So this moves this marker down. He's kind of uh, moved forward by uh, us putting putting these guys here. Uh, if this marker exits the board down here, the game ends. Um, and he who pushes that marker down here with these guys, um, well, does uh, get this little two victory point mark. So. Um, after these have been selected, um, I have to show my hand. And I'm going to refill. So on my hand, I have uh, three different types of cows, and that is actually what's important. Um, I will now count together the value of these cows. That nets me a five, meaning I can ship these uh, off to a city up to a value of five, which uh, only allows me to ship up to Wichita, Topeka, or Kansas City, which is kind of like the how you how I used to throw balls at the sports events. Oh, you night. too? <laughs> and then oh, it's actually it's landing behind you. I did that too. <laughs> so, um, hey, it's not only me. <laughs> any, anyway, for uh, since this has a value of five, first I get some money. I get five money, coins to money, money. specifically. Uh, so this is the way how you get more uh, more money. Um, if I had something called certificates, which is this little marker, I could increase the total amount of uh, value I get from my card. So if this would be on two, I could spend one or two to increase this to a six or a seven, which may be important later on to give you just this little nudge that brings you to another city. Why that is important? Well, please pay close attention. Um, if you do the really bad throw and only ship to Kansas City, um, you get six coins for that. What? I understood something else for ship. You get six coins for that. However, uh, each uh, little mar uh, um, uh, token that uh, is there at the end of the game is worth minus six victory points, uh, which is something you may not... I'm not sure. Sometimes I have heard this can be a good way anyway, uh, but I will ship to Wichita. So let's take a look at Wichita. Wichita is this space here, 
and it has white borders, meaning I can now pick any of the little wooden disks on my board that is on a space with white borders and then place it on there. Um, let's see, what would I like to do? I think I... I want to be able to double exchange cards the next time I go onto one of those spaces. So I'll take my little disk and place it on Wichita, which now means that I cannot ship to Wichita anymore in any future visits to Kansas City. Meaning I am kind of forced now to improve my hand with uh, well, cow cards. Uh, to go higher and higher over the course of the game, because you can clearly see Wichita is 4, then Colorado Springs is 6, then Santa Fe 8, and Albuquerque 10, and so on, uh, up to San Francisco, which requires you to have 18 points, which may involve getting those certificates up uh, to reach the last mile, so to speak, if you want to do that. At the end of the game, also, if you have discs on adjacent cities, you get the bonus, or sometimes it's not a bonus, it's a mailer uh, in between them. So here, if you have Colorado Springs and Wichita, you actually get a negative victory point for that. But um, later on, these uh, allow you to pick up uh, these objective cards here or are worth further victory points and so on. Um, also, there's something I haven't uh, done yet. Um, if I ship to Wichita, what I do is I take a close look at my engine here and then count how many red crosses are between my engine and the city. So in this case, there's one red cross, which means I have to pay for the shipment uh, one single coin, which I do now. And uh, it's typically, uh, uh, well, it's, it is pretty much impossible to not be able to pay that because you get the money for your cards beforehand and then you have to pay um, how far you want to go. Uh, but that might be also sometimes a, a decision that influences uh, what you want to do there. Is it if it's really you can ship very far, but it's getting quite expensive and you get uh, to uh, uh, not keep as much money as you had. But that is the main reason why you want to use the train conductor, the train whisperer to uh, try to push your engine further and further along this track to um, reduce the cost that is uh, available in there. Um, also, since now is any, a good space to talk about that uh, as any, uh, you might see this little uh, side tracks, and uh, these are also spaces that you can move your little engine on, and if you do that, you uh, are able to uh, do whatever it says here, in this case, pay two coins and place one of your white discs here that nets you a victory point. And if you then have one of these guys already on your board, since you cannot cut out the three ones you start with, um, if I had so someone here, I could place him there, which replaces this little tile, which gives you a permanent bonus. In this case, this gives you a per permanent certificate. Uh, and also is typically worth additional victory points for conditions printed on here. So in this case, uh, for two, for a pair of danger tiles, you get three victory points, uh, whereas others here have other conditions on no, 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 I'm on just uh, giggling about the danger tiles, I'm sorry. Now, that's that's what happens in Kansas City, and once that is done, you go back to the beginning of the Great Western Trail. And now I get four new cards. I will look at them, then I make a desperate face. Irish. And it's Sarah's turn. Yeah, I'm going to Kansas City as well. Bonjour. I'm gonna be a B I T C A. How, how, how about place it somewhere else, the like the building, huh? <laughs> but that was so uh, we we've talked uh, about gringo? pretty much anything. No, you're, you're, not, you're no gringo. You're gringa. Gring. <laughs> Gringas. I don't know. So I chose that one. Mm. Now I'm going to, of course, take. You, Mr. Mechanic, and I'm gonna place a TP. 
and uh, you might have already guessed that this, uh, even if you take some of these workers, that's actually that's this action here where you can buy workers. Uh, the price of these guys is determined by the uh, by the cost yeah. next to it. Uh, and if if you buy someone, you wouldn't start filling up those spaces with uh, new guys. And uh, over here on the yellows, that is when the cow market is refilled. Well, Otherwise, it, you have to. That yes, if if uh, or if, you have if to it pay. moves over here, it, yeah. the cow market is refilled to the full set that is depicted here. So in a two-player game, they always have to be seven cards out. In a four-player game, it has to be thirteen cards. Um, Another thing you can do, which uh, I didn't say when Sarah was buying her cow, because it doesn't no. make sense uh, at, at this point, is uh, if you have more of your uh, uh, handlers, you can spend one to draw two new cards and add it to the market in hopes that you come up with something that you may need or can use yeah. to, to do that. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go to the city now. I also have five. So I, let me guess, you also want to go Wichita? Yep, I want to go Wichita. So Sarah also also gets uh, four coins for that, so five minus one because of the red cross in, in between there. And you get to uh, commit one of your wooden discs. Mm, I want the... Let's do a quick decision. Change thingamajiggy. Okay, and that goes on here, so you can already see uh, there you're not limited to one disc per... Um, why am I so far ahead with my train? Because I explained that there's the oh, off, okay. off track kind of kind. I don't of want to cheat. Hmm. Not even on these. I don't want to cheat. And uh, quite frankly, we've shown you everything you possibly actually need to know to play this game. Um, there's some actions uh, that are we haven't done yet so far, like going on here and buying a, a guy. But if you do that, let's say I buy this cowboy, I would just place it on the next space here. If you get to a space that has an icon on here, you actually get to get a little bonus. So in this case, you I would get a danger tile for free. Um, the train conductor has a lot of bonuses here. Some have conditions like this one saying you have to have a gray card on hand to discard and then you can use the, the other thing here. Um, the certificate. And so you continue moving around. Uh, the game will kind of slow down further and further because uh, people will start building stuff on these uh, on these trails and that takes longer for everybody to walk through um, but you can mitigate that by upgrading your options so uh, some of these discs have not only white borders but black borders and you see that the more expensive towns there or the further out these side rails go um, you get to exchange uh, discs for, for black borders and uh, these then add uh, or uh, give you further reach. So uh, fully upgraded, you can uh, go five steps with uh, uh, your uh, little cowboy uh, or you can upgrade your hand size. So fully upgraded, you get to hold up to six cards on hand, which is really useful for reaching those uh, further away cities and uh, but then you need to pick up cards that are diverse because if you take a look at what's available to you you start out only with these gray black white and green cards so you want to pick up uh, these colored uh, colorful cards from from here that give you just at least the option of having more multiple different cards on hand when you reach kansas um, same obviously goes for the really high value cards like the purple ones or the the brown ones and um the the game in in the game itself you kind of have to decide what you want to go for um which uh uh, we'll kind of uh, we will almost in the likes and dislikes section uh, just to give you a general idea um, something I found uh, irritating after the first play but that seems to be totally cool is that you can play this and then be at close to the end and, and like over here with your marker and then realize I think I'll never be able in this game to ship a cow to uh, San Francisco because it's so far away I never have that many points on hand or uh, I will never be able to go to this uh, last place here with my with my little train engine. Why did they bother to add in something like, hey, if you get here and you move it forward, you ha you have to or you can move it back and get three coins for each space you move back, uh, which seemed pretty powerful. But um, 
Yeah, or uh, here, if you get enough of these dudes here to cover these uh, last two spaces, you get four victory points for each space covered. But that means you have to go shopping so often and buy these guys um, that you kind of feel overwhelmed or feel like, hey, maybe I'm playing this game wrong. But it seems, uh, at least from when we played, that these are all viable options to kind of, if you want to focus on them, you can do that. And even, at least to me, it felt enjoyable, even if you don't focus on them and try to balance some things out, uh, prioritize maybe two things and instead of just one uh, and, and do that. Um, and obviously, this also uh, uh, the entire board then gets more and more complex with new buildings added. Uh, the thing I wanted to mention is uh, buildings that belong to players uh, cannot be used uh, by other players. Uh, you can still land there and uh, then use your auxiliary reaction, similar as if you would land on a neutral or your own space and just say, I don't want to use any of the, the actions that are on there. But uh, you just keep on adding steps for other players. And sometimes this is risky, uh, placing a building uh, after all those uh, danger tiles. Uh, but um, these little bonus actions here are also pretty nice to have. I mean, this says if, you, if I discard a one, a card that you typically don't want to have on hand I, anyway, you get one of these certificate things and two coins, which is... Uh, in some points in the game, you'll be like, I really want some money. Um, and uh, you don't have it on hand and uh, trying to find your way out. And then we have the objective cards, which I just mentioned briefly. But uh, if you if you get them either through one of these effects, um, you uh, uh, actually put them into your discard pile until you get them on hand. And if you get them on hand, um, you can at some point during your turn decide, I want to actually activate this objective card and then you get this instant bonus that's on here so in this case is draw three cards and then discard three cards uh there's some that let you use an auxiliary reaction um and so on but be warned if you actually decide to bring this into play then you have to fulfill its requirements otherwise it'll be worth negative victory points at the end of the game um but even in the, your last turn, it's worth picking these up because uh, even if you have not played them just before the game ends, you get to go through your entire deck and see uh, which of these are in there. If you want to play them or bring them into play, you just don't get the uh, instant effect anymore at that point. Um, and in other ways to, to win, well, the cows themselves are worth points as well, as you can see here. And they're actually worth different amount of points. Well, not these, but uh, the four and the five are sometimes uh, worth... But this one has just one. This has No, I mean three. within. So there's a oh, five yeah, that is okay, worth seven. It. And then there's another one that's worth five. So yeah. you'll, you'll have ample opportunities to curse at other people on the table that buy that cow that you wanted. Oh, it's almost like marrying someone. Um, and then being... And... Well, maybe maybe you have a very successful poly cow life in, ahead in front of you or something. That's that's how that works. Whatever, <laughs> be tolerant. <laughs> yes. Um, or divorce while you're playing board games. It helps. You can be married afterwards again. It's fine. Yeah. But you don't have to play nice when you're playing yes. board games. You play to win, folks. Play yes. to win. Yes, the, uh, can the you, stakes appreciate it. Can you please say uh, age and uh, thingamajig time? I, I'm, uh, that's kind of the, the hint that Sarah is giving you. For the, for the next. Uh, telling So that I have to tell you, well... I messed up and did not place the box in a way that I can easily grasp that. So now I actually have to reach out and this is unprofessional again. And then I look at this and it's not on, it's not on the, this It's on thing. the other one, which uh, I placed even further away. Just uh, because no, I have to I look knew. at the, I, this is super professional. So this is for, <laughs> for little Angus Beef's uh, 12 and up in age. Oh, also, I thought inches. <laughs> also, two to four players and takes 75 to 150 minutes. And now we move into likes and dislikes and I start talking and you are quiet and listen and find it obviously informational, the things that I say. So, number one, 
let's get the shitty things out of, out of the way. This no, is, no, you have to do the you have no, to do the same. I want to. You have to do something positive and uh, yeah, a positive. Is you listen, to, I talk. To, that was the positive thing. To wrap now the, the negative in the positive. Yeah, the positive was I talk, you listen. Oh. The negative, the one negative is this is not a four game, uh, four player game. It's not. It's or let's uh, let's rephrase that. I don't like this game while playing with four players. I very much like it with two or three players. And I think if you, uh, well, if you are a person that has maybe one or two board games and tons of time left in the day and you want to play this with both players and don't have any plans, you don't need to go pee or have other appointments or dates or other interests in your life, then of course you could play this with four players and play it for four hours and it's totally enjoyable. But for me personally, it takes way too long, it overstays its welcome with four players. However, with two or three players, it's totally and perfect. I, 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 and I, I, wanna, I really like it there. I, I, I want to do a hang on. Um, so. First of all, hi, this is Sarah. Sarah. The grumpy Sarah, board game player. Gamer. Sarah does not dislike playing with three other people, but she dislikes if games take too long. And yeah, or if they're not interesting, if it's just. Yeah. Um, so there's. Um, I think wood there's. pushing at one point. Uh, I, I, wa I want to elaborate on that because I think there's actually two, uh, two aspects uh, to, to this. One is uh, downtime. Which uh, is if someone makes his turn, all the other players may well. You can look at the board, but you don't have much to do while this while this happens. Now I can understand that uh, that is uh, um, annoying if you that is something that really gets you. Uh, I have to say though, I did to me the downtime didn't wasn't as bad. As, it was as with that. four. It wasn't even, bad even, with two. No, even, even with four, I wasn't. It wasn't the downtime that. Uh, that no, I was, was wandering um, off in my mind. I wasn't. I was leaving the table in my mind and then coming yeah. back that's not something that it's, i like i like to stay at the table the, the thing the, it's just when we played with four and maybe that's the unfortunate thing is that that was also the learning experience game uh is that it just it took really long four hours uh, and not necessarily because uh, we have a bunch of ap people uh, sorry analysis parallels people at, no. at the table it was um Although I have to say, I th I'm pretty sure you can play this with four and it'll be fine. But then you kind of have to, okay, I'm going there, I'm doing that, your turn. Going there, doing that, your turn. And just breeze through it. And that's actually entirely possible with this game. Um, I think... But everybody has to know the game by heart. And there is no... And you really just have to look, play, look, play. Yeah. No minutes... I spend on thinking I think, then you could achieve i think this um a minimal <laughs> funny, funny enough this feature is something that reminds me of uh, a game that this shares a mechanic with and that's dominion uh where if you play this like a uh, kind of advanced level dominion everybody knows what the cards do and he's like this 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 coins your turn this 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 is this actions your turn and i'll get these 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 and it moves really quickly and it's almost almost the same feel i get from this uh, but here it's less about the cards in your deck it's more about the these the action spaces the that are yes. that are on the board that yeah. uh, if you if you have this plan kind of set out in your in your in your head that says okay i i know i want to pick up some of these cows soon so i will go to this space and how can i get there quick enough and then the only other thing is, is there anything in between that is worth stopping at? Uh, yes, no, and then go. And uh, I'm next yeah, player. totally. And this is what I mean with it overstays its welcome for what it does. And coming back to your Dominion reference, which I adore because yes, that's exactly that. I would not play Dominion for three hours. Mm -hmm. I play it for sixty. I play it for ninety. And if I'm feeling really Funny, I'm playing it for 120, but that's that. But not a single game. Not a single game. No, but like with some expansions, we played a bit longer than with others. So yeah. you, the, the point here is at um, two-thirds in the game with four players, I felt like I was only 
or it moved into the space of um, not deciding anymore what exact actions I want and how I could optimize my turns. But it was more like I'm pushing wood and uh, that's that. Hmm. So I didn't, I, I, I don't want to say I lost interest because that's not that, but um, it didn't grab me as much anymore as it did in the beginning. And funny, uh, we played it with two players, uh, just him and I. And that feeling wasn't even close to mm. to occurring. So it is definitely the downtime and the amount of players on the table that, of course, need their time to do their turn. You cannot just fly by. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense to play the game because, well, you want to win. You want to play to win, yeah. folks. Yeah. I, I, so I'm... I think it is best with two, quite nice with three. Not my kind of thing with four. That's that's the only criticism that I have for this game. But all the other things, they're awesome. This has a great board. The components are sturdy enough. They're kind of fiddly, maybe, if you have big hands. But for me, they're totally fine. I love to set this game up. It's beautiful to set up. And I take my time with it. And uh, uh, divide all the all the stacks of the um, tiles here and stuff. I really love it. It's just that one thing, and that's that makes me cringe. A bit. And, and and that's what I what I was kind of going for with the there's to me there's a difference between the uh, the downtime part and the overall game length. I think I'm fine with the downtime between turns, even if every I mean even if you're playing with someone who's not going like. Next, like next, uh, next rapid step. fire, <laughs> but but I think the the thing that kind of surprised me or, or was a little bit daunting was in the four player game. We I was like, okay, I feel like this game could end soon, and I looked at this track, and this marker was just moving from here to Bad, here or yeah. something, almost indicating the mid game. And considering that uh, if the marker is here in the, in the middle, that's not the mid-game because there's more buildings coming out. The game is getting slower and slower. Um, even if you have these upgrades, you will ha have more options to you and it, it it is noticeable that it's getting slower. I would say for... I would have wished for more players that this track actually gets shorter a little bit. Um, and, yeah, uh, that you just play until here and with two players you I'm, play until there. And, yeah. and that's that's just from what I can tell from from the feel. I couldn't, I can't really tell you if that would imbalance the game in in a in a meaningful way. I would assume so because that's what they decided to go for. Um, but that's in a in a two player game. This goes a lot quicker, and, uh, and I think that's the the overall yeah. game. I'm fine with uh, if the overall game isn't that terribly long, and then accepting that individual turns are a little bit longer, rather than um, well, I, I mean, in a four player game, at worst you have both that individual turns take long, and the entire game takes very yeah. long. Well, with two players, you put out less buildings, so you're having bigger jumps, uh, maybe, hmm. and uh, with uh, four players. There's it's just way more on the board that maybe stops you. And uh, what I felt with the two-player game, and I wonder if you had the same feeling, was, oh, no, I want to do that one thing. Can I do it in the last round? Can I do it? Can I do it? And I couldn't do it last mm -hmm. time. So it, it feels like, oh, man, we're already there. We're yeah. already finished. And with the four-player game, it was like, oh, we're only halfway through. Oh, gosh, are we going to finish the game? We actually, well, there was the quick thought on the table saying, do we want to finish or is this enough for a learning game? Hmm. So it, it was a huge difference between the two experiences. And yes, if you if you're playing with uh, more players, you get a little bit more movement. So here uh, in on the two player, the, so the base thing on here is for two players. This says you get to move three spaces and I can upgrade by plus one. And if you go to the four player, you would replace this. Uh, and then you start out with four and you can upgrade to a total of seven, which is quite a lot, actually. But uh, for some reason, it's that's kind of the impression we the yeah. game left was. And now you could also, I could also say, in part, I agree with what you said, that the, the stuff that this game asks you to do isn't super interesting or not gri as gripping. It's to not, there's no brain melt. Yeah, so so I, I think what you're trying to mm. say is um, 
the decisions you make in the game do not uh, kind of qualify for the amount of time exactly. that you're sitting exactly. on the table playing, yes. playing this. Yes. Um, I'm at least in my ag pers very personal. Ag feel. Again, I'm 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 ambivalent about this because the so the the individual choices you make on these buildings and where you go on that's all very simple. But what I actually really enjoyed about this was the. This uh, thinking, okay, what I, do I want to do this game? Do I want to try to ship to San Francisco and go for the really high value things? How do I maximize that? Do I want to go for the for the engines and try mm -hmm. to go there? And it all feels kind of viable, which is yeah, um, you, and that that goes for high replayability. You have different sides of the of the tokens and stuff, so you can play A and B. Yeah. Then you can try, this time I want to go for mainly the cows, and my second uh, thing is the train. Or I want to go for hazard in B and with mm. the objective cards, and the second one is the workers. So you can mix and match and try to um, hit different objectives each time you play and see how you do there. Yeah, my, my, my point point being, while this isn't as gripping and interesting in the in its individual steps it takes, I still think it's a, a from a, a kind of strategy-wise uh, point of view, an interesting game in terms of uh, the, the long-term planning and seeing oh, yeah. how that works. Out. Yeah, but I'm, I'm definitely there with you, but... But I'm fine with 90 minutes or 120. I'm not okay with 150 or more for what it does. It's just I like I really really like this game with two players. And that's but that's that's also something I think I would kind of I get the same feel from a game like Dominion where it's mm -hmm. the the individual turns. Yes, there's some kind of combo thing that you want to get going and do that but then the game is more about the long term yes, exactly. kind of deck building thing although uh, here I don't want to say uh, or use the term deck building because the deck you built doesn't or is only a, a part of what you're doing here with the thing. It's it's, uh, it's also about where what where you do ship off. Where, what kind of guys do you get mm -hmm. on here? The so the engine has multiple paths that you have to to manage there, and uh, I think that's what makes it interesting. I actually I have to say, and we can go into the. Oh, I want to add one okay. one uh, More thing. More negative? No, 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 no. It's a good thing. Okay. Um, <laughs> you no, know, I said I only have that one criticism, and all the rest is perfectly awesome game. And now it totally distracted me. What did I want to say? There was something. Oh gosh. I talked about the end building engine, different paths to pursue. No, deck of cards. No. I mean, we haven't talked about the artwork yet. I I, I like the the board as it as oh, it is. It's, I hate it when I'm it's, blank. It. It's not something super super special, but I it's it's pleasant to look at. I actually like the entire idea idea of having this trail that gets more uh, more uh, filled with buildings and uh, does then alter the paths you're taking. The danger tiles that. Uh, also augmented augment that a little bit where you can try to force people going a certain direction because it's getting more and more expensive so uh, when i said it, you go over here so when sarah plays this thing here these tiles not only do they take up two uh two spaces but i would have to pay uh f for the two-player game i would have to pay four coins to the bank to just go over there and it's a sad state of affairs that sarah does not remember her i'm totally blanking thing. and then I hate that. So once I remember, I will have it in the comment section. I will pin yeah, it to the top. It, it, it was almost, a really good thing. It's almost as if you were uh, standing standing here, uh, neck in news with uh, 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 harmonica in your mouth hand going... I might still slap you. No, it was actually... I like that song, but I don't like the whistling part. I'm so sorry. I'm, 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 I hate that I'm blanking. It was... Uh. It's all for a fistful of gummy bears. Mm, don't make me hungry. But that's the song with the with the. Yeah, whistling. I know, I know, I know, I know. Whatever. I'm blanking. Sorry about that. Maybe I will remember throughout talking a bit more about the funny Shall shows. we rate? Yes, we will rate. And I am uh, saying it up front. I'm rating for two players. I'm not rating for four players. No, I think we can rate the entire game. The entire game? Okay, well then. One, two, three. One, tilted one click, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I... 
as I the, the only thing I can really say against this would be the uh, that it might take too long overall playing playing this game. I I still like this uh, very much, and uh, I have to say this game goes into direct competition uh, in my mind against something like Railroad Revolution. Mm-hmm. Um, and although it's very different it has, approach, yeah, it has I, they different both have their place. mechanics, but it's the same category for me for, yeah. for some for some reason. And not not only because it has little trains and, and you're shipping a thing throughout the US around. and and stuff. So you want to go west in the railroad revolution yeah, yeah. as well. But it, funny enough, in my mind, it occupies the same space as well. Um, I, I think I don't this, know why. Now, if I Let's uh, transition into funny stories experiences here's, here. Here's the uh, not not yet. Here's no, well, here's the hard part for me to to make to make a okay. recommendation before I remind okay. you about steaks and that you're hungry. Um, it might be that uh, we have a murder <laughs> happening. I, not uh, of him. No, I just. But uh, I'm gonna I'm uh, gonna uh, munch something uh, before was, we go food shopping. Uh, I, I was uh, that. about to say I just read an article that says that human meat is actually not very nutritious. So no, uh, no, I would never. I would never hurt you. Much? I just made, no. I would just make you take down the trash once more. <laughs> that's fine. Any, that's anyway, punishment so enough. So what I what I try to say is. Uh, if I had to put out a recommendation, I would say I think that Railroad Revolution is the thinkier game um, that, uh, as we said, occupies the same space. I think this I would tend to recommend more as a family game under under a certain aspect or, or kind of condition. Just have one kid. No, you can you can and you could even <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure you could even play this with four, but. I think this is a game that you have to commit to playing um, multiple times with yes. the same people so that everybody kind of Knows gains by heart. speed. And then I can see that this game is uh, yes. kind of almost moving from here to there because the the game length thing will alleviate itself by just having this sped up mm-hmm. uh, uh, turns if everybody knows what they're doing. But on, this, on the same hand, this is kind of... Uh, it's not a good thing about a game uh, to to have a recommendation where it's like, yeah, but you have to play this a bunch of times and before you actually get to think this feels good or great. But there's um, also other games where I have the same feeling and where I definitely put in the time and efforts to to get to get there. But, but that's a game. So I, a game I, I would classify as it would be something like Dominion, where. You have to play this a couple of times before it's getting good because you kind of focus on on the parts of the game that are interesting. But in defense of Dominion, that game is a little bit shorter per play and than this. Yeah, for, for I sure. mean another game. Um, it's a totally different category, but um, having to play this over and over again until I can really enjoy it was actually Aquasphere. It, it's it's uh, it it felt the same it, way in the. I didn't. Booyah! And, and, Booyah! And, and in this in this episode, I can do finger guns without feeling bad. Yes, definitely. Go for so, it. So yeah, you felt so, um, you felt something. Oh yes, I did. Oh, so many things. Um, no, but it it took me two or three rounds to actually grasp the game enough to, well, not feel stuck on a turn and not to take forever to actually do my turn and that is the same way here so and i didn't i did put in the effort and the time and the play through uh aquasphere to get to the point where i know it by know it by heart and i can really play it rather fast and i enjoy it a lot so i think you could do this uh, do the same thing here i think it's it's definitely worth it but you have to be aware this is not an out of the box, and you have a great first gameplay experience. Mm. You you really have to, well, pay your dues and learn learn this game and remember all the icons and remember all the tiny dilly dallies, and then you can enjoy it. And it's faster the less player at the beginning. That's, That's just 
the, the the only other thing since we really didn't talk about uh, the the production values and um, the artwork i mean the the you little did. the little engines are cool the uh, the cowboys are cool there's a lot of wooden discs and, and cubes which are uh, generally appreciated mm -hmm. the thing that's a little bit annoying or at least popped up to be annoying uh, especially for the four player game since this is already large in size and yeah, now we have, have the camera really really and high now, and you, now you also so have you can four see. of these boards uh, laying around uh, and uh, these icons are sometimes I'm maybe I'm old listen if sometimes you try to use evident I put into Evans evidence you squint your eyes and, and try to figure out what's on the other side of the board and it's really hard to see honey it. I was I was uh, covering up my but cleavage here and trying to look yes I'm short-sighted but, but yeah I was about to say they, you are, also they, refuse are, rather, to... they are rather tiny and uh, well I do have glasses I just don't wear them at, at our house see, unless, clearly, clearly a problem unless this game that doesn't... we watch uh, with the yes. video production. clearly a problem problem of this game design. You know, it makes it, uh, I, I always have a nice cleavage there and I sit uh, opposite you and then I can lean for the icons and maybe it grants me a point or two. I don't know. <laughs> no, didn't, didn't work so far. <laughs> but no, I, I'm, the, the, the problem with the icons is there are so many. There are kind of tiny and they're uh, from the colors there it's green and it's uh, yellow ochre and it's sienna so they're all natural nature colors rather close together not a lot of contrast and stuff so that was yeah, yeah and I, we're I, getting old that too I, I mean the the amount of icons there is something that if you played this two or three times i am pretty sure i, oh, yeah. I don't we there's the there's, there's nothing here i would need to look up now what it does exactly no. there's some some you might want to look up when it comes to end game scoring when the with these little things but they, there's nothing that's really difficult to grasp it's just uh, the trying to okay which was the thing there and then Trying to figure out where you want to want to go is yeah. sometimes annoying uh, if you have this setup. Oh well, I think that's that. I I did already cut it into funny stories experiences where where I I don't oh, remember we're, any we're other. Spend, stuff. We're spending our funny story experience time. You know, it was funny. You think I'm funny? It was more experience. You think I'm funny? Do you remember any, gonna, any funny we're stories? Gonna, I mean, we're gonna we, meet outside at high noon and then go. <laughs> So next week I'm gonna be here alone. I'm sorry, say goodbye to him. Wait, wait. I'm pretty good at aiming. I mean, yes, you're the. No, the, you're the, not. You're good at, at shooting, but not yeah. at aiming. Yeah, okay. <laughs> true. Yeah, way around. No, that's, that's true. But still, I'm I'm very efficient. Hmm. But um, you know, uh, the the only other thing coming that's why i said i did definitely cut this into the experiences already the only other thing that i remember that i really liked is playing western or country music without the whistling of the morricone um while playing and it add to the flavor or the flair at the table and i really liked it and so if you have any country or western music Play it as background music while you play this game. Maybe have bring your own cowboy, a cowboy hat. hat or something. So or the German lesson Mundharmonika. What's it called? I think it's just harmonica. Harmonica. Okay. <laughs> no, you were awfully close to that one melody that will haunt me for the rest no, of my you life. You just said that's the one you like. No, no, you were from the. You were very close to the uh, Game of Thrones starting music from the. Sarah's not really good with music. I'm, I can I'm, listen. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. She, yeah, she. I hears, can play rock band. I play, things, I play but... bass and rock band. That's as far as but... I go. <laughs> <sighs> you will never educate me anymore, <laughs> any better. I'm sorry. I can paint music. That's that. But I think and it's time to wrap up. Here's your German Western lesson of the day. So that that song that she uh, she does like is uh, yeah, Spiel das Lied from yeah. from Tod in German, which uh, would translate to uh, play, play, me. play me the song of death. 
um, which uh, is not called uh, in English, which uh, would be Once Upon a Time mm -hmm. in Mexico, I think. Uh, yeah, I just don't like the whistle part. I like the rest. Um, and, and that song does not have the whistle part. The thing that she always confuses this with is a fistful of dollars. Um, do it. I, I have my do. Which uh, is the... And wow, now, and wow, now my wow. lips are dry because I've been talking so much. So. Wow, wow, wow. So apparently she she knows that, but she complains because uh, the other German lesson. I thought it was part lesson, of the same song. The uh, no, it's two, two, it's, it's two, two different movies. Oh, I thought uh, no, I, I thought it was the same song, just. It's, at the beginning, and then you don't hear the whistle, but the rest. I'm pretty sure it's both from Ennio Morricone. Yeah, but, it um, is. It is. But it's sure. two different movies. Two great movies, but entirely different. One is with Clint Eastwood, the one where you don't like... With an empty chair song. or... Sorry. Yes, yes. That is sorry. actually... That is Epic Rap Battles is making fun of that one. Okay. Yes. Okay. I like his son. He's a very good actor. I really like what he's doing. We just watched him at the movies. In the last movie, in the... No, not Ghost in the Shell, the one before. Logan? Logan. Hmm. He was in that movie. Hmm. He was the old guy. No. No? No. Anyway. <laughs> it's time um, to wrap up. Clint Eastwood is now, what, 500 or something? So his son must be 270? No. Older? No, his son is like 30-something, I think. Anyway, don't... Please don't be if, uh, if you are. Don't be offended. If We're just are, stupid. If you are Clint Eastwood or happen to be his son, which name Sarah forgot, which Scott. I never started to remember. Scott. Scott if you are sc the, the <laughs> sc Scott this Eastwood. Scott. In particular, <laughs> have our heartfelt, most German thanks for enduring us so far. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you're any other viewer, this is, same goes for you. This is more me picking on Sarah, less you picking on you, because she always brings it up and then forgets everything or confuses stuff. So it's me pulling her leg, not yours. We, we. <laughs> we are in this together. Great. So let's wrap up the video. Probably a good idea now. Yes, thank you. I'm hungry. We have to go food shopping. So, goodbye everybody. Have a wonderful weekend. We're gonna see you next week. If I remember correctly, it's Easter Sunday next week, so um, maybe... Are you gonna have the Easter Bunny costume? <laughs> no, he, he is, he is falling apart. <laughs> I'm gonna have to have maintenance on it. Maybe it's no, me. not that maintenance. Maybe it's me who's 500 years old. Mm -hmm. Anyway, nice that you checked in. Check yeah. in with us next week uh, when we talk about a board game for change. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we do. Take good care. Have a wonderful weekend. Do the wonderful YouTube stuff. Like, share, subscribe. As always, if you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section below. You can also visit us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And we do have geek lists on Board Game Geek for the Gamers Couch and also for Draw for Initiative, which is going to be back next week with a new teaser. So uh, look around, follow us, join us in the community, and uh, yeah, have fun. Take care. Stay safe, partner. I'm your partner? No. You discarded me. <laughs> Talking about them townsfolk. Them I'm, 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 I'm terribly bad at this. Let's just say goodbye. Say Bye. Goodbye. Moo. So long. Now you have to do the. Ch -ch 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 We're not going in. Go, please, now. <laughs> it's not going to get any better.